Hello everyone, my name is Beverly Allen. I'm a Tacoma-based attorney. I practice in family law. I've been practicing for 10 years. Today's video is on OAH hearings and the appeals process when you are challenging an administrative law decision. So for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to primarily be discussing the division of child support and the child protective services divisions, both of which fall under the division of children, youth, and families, and both of which are administrative agencies. This presentation is my own opinion. It's based on my own practice. It is in partnership with the Pierce County Law Library, but this presentation is not endorsed by the Pierce County Law Library, and it is not endorsed by Pierce County. So with that said, I'll be sharing my presentation with you. All right, so administrative decisions. These are decisions by state agencies. They are governed by the Washington Administrative Code. The Washington Administrative Code is agency rules that implement the provisions of the revised code of Washington. So what the legislature passes and what the governor signs into law is codified in the RCWs. The state agencies then, such as the Division of Children, Youth and Families, passes or implements the Washington Administrative Code sections that relate to that RCW. And those are found at www.ledge.wa.gov. So if you go to that website and you click on laws and agency rules, it then takes you to the section for the Washington Administrative Code. So that's what I'm referring to when I say the wax, and that's where to find them. So the most important thing about administrative appeals is this is all governed by letters. You receive a letter warning you that the agency is going to take action, telling you how to participate, and then a letter telling you what the decision was. Each decision from an administrative agency will come with instructions for how to appeal it and when to appeal it. So be sure and read your mail. Anything coming from a state agency or anything from the court is important. You should open it. You also need to appeal at every stage. In order for you to get a hearing where you can get evidence and in order for you to be able to appeal this to the superior court, you will need to show that you have exhausted your administrative remedies. And that doesn't mean do you feel exhausted. That means have you taken the time to appeal each and every stage? Have you met your deadlines? Is there no further avenue for relief for you with the administrative process? And if you have exhausted your administrative remedies, you can then appeal that to superior court. But first, you need to get through each and every stage at the administrative level. So as an example, if you are a parent who has been accused of abuse and neglect, you will receive, after the investigation, you will receive a letter that tells you whether CPS has determined that the original allegation was founded or unfounded, or if they've taken some other action. Assuming it's founded, that means you have the ability to request review of that. You have the ability to internally appeal that. Normally, that's done by filing a simple form and mailing that off to the Division of Children, Youth, and Family Services. So it gets escalated to a higher level. After that higher level reviews what the original investigating social worker did, they will issue their opinion. If they uphold that decision and you are still unhappy with it, you can then appeal that decision to the Office of Administrative Hearings and you will 
get a schedule which will tell you how to call in, when to call in, and then from there you'll be given a briefing and a trial schedule. But you need to appeal at every stage. If you miss a deadline, if it turns out you haven't appealed within 30 days, for example, of the final decision, then you don't have the ability to have that contested hearing at the OAH level. Settlement offers. Um, this is something to consider. And in the case of abuse and neglect, uh, it's possible that the state will be authorized to offer a settlement agreement. Most common settlement agreement I see is the state may offer to, instead of doing a founded finding on abuse, maybe that they will change that to a founded finding on neglect. Now that is a type of settlement offer. You are not required to accept the settlement offer. It may be something that you are interested in pursuing, particularly because uh, neglect finding is a little bit less severe than abuse finding. It could, for example, still allow you to participate in your child's activities at school. So this is a snapshot of the Administrative Procedures Act, which is a, a, a section of the RCW that instructs um, how to go about uh, engaging in decisions uh, to the, the WACs, and engaging in pleadings and briefs and motions when you are in front of the Office of Administrative Hearings, in front of OAH. So this is the WAC citation. Uh, it's not the RCW citation. So when you are uh, implementing this, that is what you are giving it to. Okay, so the judicial review of administrative cases, um, and I stand corrected, this is actually part of the RCW. Uh, the judicial review of administrative cases is found here at chapter 34.035. It does explain how to go ahead and appeal your OAH decision, so that final administrative decision, how to appeal that to the superior court and under what circumstances you can appeal that directly to the Court of Appeals. Now, I recommend that you appeal this first to the superior court because that gives you another level of review and it's much easier to engage with the superior court than it is to engage with the court of appeals. That's going to be the subject of a separate video that I'll be doing here. Uh, for now, this is going to focus on just the OAH appeals. So when you draft your appeal to OAH, you need to be clear on what you're asking for. And you need to be clear on why you think the lower agency made a mistake, what they got wrong, what was wrong with their findings and what you want the court to do about it. So with that in mind, you should have a clear roadmap and you should be able to make your separate points to the court. I recommend you do a separate heading which I usually do by bolding and underlining each point and then by explaining uh, in writing what you want the court to do differently and why the agency made a mistake. So normally the letter that has the decision will tell you exactly what the WAC is and also what the RCW is that the decision is ultimately based on. Go to that WAC. Go to that RCW, look that up on, on ledge.wa.gov and make sure that you're citing to it in your brief. Why did they get it wrong? Why was their decision wrong? Why are the facts and evidence against that decision? Do your research. So by that, I mean look for cases that have interpreted the same RCW or WAC that applies in your case. Uh, and see if you find a case that supports your position. So the law library has several options for remote legal research. So go to the Pierce County Law Library website and look at the legal research portals. It will give you login information. Under non-pandemic conditions, you were actually able to go to the computers in the law library. Under COVID pandemic conditions currently, 
as of the date of this recording, which is January 13th, you are not able to exercise that in-person research, but there is remote research that's available to you. Do use that. So after you've done your briefing, after you've appealed at every level, and now you're ready to go and make your arguments to the Office of Administrative Hearings, you need to be prepared. So make sure, first of all, that you have all of the information on how to attend your hearing, and that's how to attend each hearing. So the first hearing is actually going to be scheduling hearing, pre-hearing conference. And that is the hearing that the court will set your briefing deadlines and will tell you how to file your evidence. So make sure that you have the Zoom or the call-in information. That is going to be on the letter that sets the hearing. There will be a phone number to check in. You should check into the hearing at least five minutes before the hearing start and make sure OAH has the right number to call. Once you get to the final argument, make sure that you have an outline of your argument ready. If you are prepared enough, if you've read your materials, that can be as simple as bullet points that you want to make. And in fact, even if you have a longer outline, I recommend that you still have bullet points because that way you can check them off as you go and make sure that you've made your point. Always address the judge or judges if you're at future appeals, such as the Court of Appeals, but always address your judge as your honor. Be respectful, don't raise your voice, don't argue back at the judge. You will have the opportunity for further appeals if you disagree with their decision. But keep in mind, this is all recorded. If you lose your temper, that will not reflect well on you. So hot bench versus cold bench. When you're actually arguing your case, you may find that you have uh, questions. If you have a lot of questions, that's a hot bench. If you have no questions at all, that's a cold bench. So um, that's why you should have a bullet points outline of your argument for a hot bench because you wanna be able to come back to your point. Uh, if possible, mark your place so that you can go back to your point for the hot bench. And pay attention to what the court is asking you. If the court is asking you questions, it's either because they don't think that you've made your point well on a certain area, or they might think you've made your point very well and they're signaling to you how you can win your argument. Pay attention to what the court is asking of the other side as well for the same reasons. If the court seems that they're not happy with the other side's argument, you can use that in your own argument and explain why you should be the winner of the argument, why the court should rule in your favor. So a cold bench, they're not asking you any questions. Um, just make sure that you hit your outline and invite the court to ask you questions. And that is the experience of the argument. At the end of the arguments, um, you are probably not gonna get a decision, but you will get some clarity on when the court will issue a decision. From there, you can appeal a decision to the superior court and the decision itself will tell you the deadlines for that and how to go about doing that. So make sure that you check all your mail, make sure that you comply with your deadlines and be prepared for your argument. Be respectful, be concise, and be clear. If you have any questions, go ahead and visit my Facebook page, Tacoma Legal Coach, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, you're gonna have to cut out the, the part where, the part at the end,